Yeah, so yesterday we did a lot of running around first thing in the morning, picking up supplies. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change two more through holes that I've already got cut out in the cockpit drains. Uh, new seacocks for those as well. We took our shaft down to Bay Propeller in Alameda and Todd there is the man. Um, he looked at everything. He looked where the cutlass bearing and the stu uh, stuffing box are running. And I don't know how old that shaft is, but he says it looks great. He says it's barely a couple of thousands. It's polished smooth where it comes through the log and the uh, stuffing box. So that was good. That was going to be about 1100 bucks that saved us. Um, we have come to the conclusion that in order to finish everything else we got to do, I got to get uh, yard guys uh, at 90 bucks an hour to sand my hull. Uh, gave me a pretty sizable estimate based on the, the length of the hull and two guys working half days because it's just a butt kicker. Um, I know if 25 year old kids are freaking sanding it and they get wiped out, there's no way I'm going to try it. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marina Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayana 37 Bramble On for the past several years. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. So I got to work on the bob stay and get that thing. Jenny got the chain locker all cleaned out so it's time to disassemble that assembly right there at the water line and get that fitting off so that i'm gonna have the yard guys focus on the through holes that need bevels and glass work and then the bob stay which needs some build up with glass and fiber as well uh, because of the curvature of the hull and do some modifications on the bronze bob stay fitting that we had cast from port townsend's foundry know, seven years ago finally getting that thing installed so I've got the rig fairly supported and right now it's on the intermediates uh, and the inner force stay, the Dyneema force stay. And I've got an incredible amount of tension holding those up. The force stay comes down to the bowsprit at, uh, right at that windlass plate. So it's taken the pressure off of the bowsprit. I've also got a halyard cranked guitar string tight to the same anchor point on the windlass bracket to keep the head stay tension off of the furling jib. So that thing is wobbling around pretty good too. There's this back stays pretty slack. Yeah, I noticed some um, pop in the blisters. I know that yeah, they, they really shine through when the sun's on the hull and it seems like the water likes to swell up when the sun gets on it. But as soon as it gets to the cool side of the boat and then the other side warms up, I see blisters. So cracking a couple, I know I'm probably going to have some blister work to do. I don't know if it goes, it probably goes all the way to the barrier coat. So we'll have to take those on a case by case basis as far as grinding them out and sanding them. But I want the guys to do the lion's share of the removing the bottom paint, probably down to barrier coat. A little good news. Things have been sort of rolling for us pretty well from what we found out. I'm really happy about not having to buy an $1,100 prop shaft. And if you ever have to, if you're ever in the Bay area or Northern California and you have to have propeller work and, uh, and shaft work done, definitely check out uh, Bay Propeller over there with the big Svensson's group. Um, so the money we saved on the prop, we ended up spending it right there at their chandlery, pretty much so. <laughs> uh, that's where we're at. Like Rich said, I've been working on most of just the dirt in the boat. So the anchor chain locker, I cleaned that out. Um, all the lockers underneath, anything that had like a through hole coming through, there was one that was leaking, they cleaned that up. Did notice that when we took the bed apart, the, we have a Froley bed system underneath and the, the actual base pieces that snap together, um, trying to unsnap them, a lot of them cracked. So I contacted, I have to get their name, it's Nickel something. Um, they sit, they're like a distributor here in the United States for Froley. I just need to buy some of the new bases because ours cracked. And she was just like, this doesn't happen. Um, this is very unusual. How many do you need? And I needed like 37 out of like 60 or something. So, you know, over half. And um, she emailed me this morning. She says, we're going to ship them to you for free because this doesn't, isn't supposed to happen. Like these things are supposed to crack. So I don't know why ours cracked. For sure, before we left Al Harbor, uh, we had the Acuva water purification system. And... We notice that sometimes we have the smart faucet with a light on it, and sometimes when you're done filling, the light doesn't go off. So I contacted them uh, for customer support, and then we noticed also underneath it was red. The unit's not supposed to glow red. 
And so the troubleshooting guide said to unplug it and plug it back in. And we actually just turned the breaker off as well. We've done a couple different things and it doesn't even power on now. So it's not even red. So I contacted them and said, hey, what do I do from here? Because um, the manual doesn't say to do anything else. And they just said, fill out this form and we're going to send you a new one. So I've done that. And so that was really good. Good news on two things. I mean, the Foley's really old. I mean, eight years old or something. That's, I mean, I did not expect them to send us new ones. I thought, we'll just buy new pieces. I just didn't want the whole thing because we had, they sell them in kits. And I just, you know, we, didn't, we didn't, don't need all of those pieces. So anyway. All right. So this is the Bob's Day fitting right here at the waterline. And I noticed... I don't know, it's been a while, but it's been kind of, I've been keeping an eye on it, but I noticed it's been separating from the uh, hull right here where there's two bolts holding it on. I know inside there's a wood backer block, but uh, I'll take you inside and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here's the bang up job Jenny did inside cleaning up that chain locker. We got footage of the moldy mess that it was, but it looks like all this, uh, I guess it's bilge coat. I don't know if we coated this locker once or or not but it looks pretty good so anyway down here's the two bolts with the backing plate and a wedge shaped probably mahogany or teak block can't really tell from the backside if it's like taking on water at the water line it doesn't look like it so right down here between the samson posts um on the other side of this bulkhead that the samson posts are through bolted to is where the uh where the bilge drains and the chain locker and everything so I can't tell if there was any staining before or anything, but we'll take a look at it once I get the bob stay off. So this is the bob stay. This is the bronze one that we had cast and it went through the shed fire fairly unscathed. Um, I'm thinking about taking this section off so that it's going to have two holes. It is through bolted from the inside as well in here, so there'll be three bolts overall going through it. Uh, through that backing plate on the inside block I was showing you earlier. So I'm thinking about lining up this hole, seeing if I can line it up fairly close to the water line where the uh, other hole was. Let me see if I can... It's going to be kind of something like that. So it's really not changing the rig angle that much. It's going to actually shorten the wire and move the pin up to about here. Other than that, it's just getting it out kind of a little higher than this one was. Right now the way the boat rides with chain and a half a tank of diesel. Um, it's not too bow heavy, but it is probably going to go underwater. I could even move it up a little bit more. And according to Mr. Perry, the uh, that won't affect the rig geometry. All right, we're up on the bow sprit underneath it, actually. And I'm going to uh, loose the turnbuckle. And then we'll see what happens. So the loose gauge is on it and it was at 45 on the gauge doing all the uh, standing rigging and tightening everything up at the intermediates and the, the inner four stay plus the spare halyard ended up at 30 and like every crank is just dropping. So there's a lot of tension on this. It's three eighths wire, but this turnbuckle makes it up really quick. It's already getting pretty, getting pretty loose. Oh yeah, it's slack. I can pull the pin now. Okay. Oh, and I just dropped the nut. I don't care. Go I'll dig it out when I get down there. I can poke it down and, okay. you know, I'm sorry. We should have stuffed the paper towel down on the bilge crate. The bilge. Crate. I know. That's okay. That's all right. So that okay. one's completely loose. It's off completely. Nice. I can turn it. Okay. You do the t the bottom one. You got to pull that yes. one out. Yeah. Go ahead and do the bottom one. You might. You'll have to use the wrench. I'm actually okay. loosening the screw out here, and it's taking the bob stay off. Can you pull that? I can't get. The that bolt you're moving right now is in the way of the, the wrench. I'm there. We, there we go. Right now, That's yeah, better. it's coming out. Well, <sighs> be prepared to be here for a while. <laughs> this one is miserable. This one's got. Um, I'm getting to the part where it's just coated in paint. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's moving. I mean, it's not stuck or anything. 
Okay. Almost. Pretty close. Hang on, hang on. Don't pull it. Okay. Stop. Okay, now you can do whatever you want. It's out? It's off. Yeah, you're pulling it. Whoa, shh. It almost fell off the scaffolding, man. You dumb dumb. <laughs> All right. Huh? Cool. Well, that was not that evil. There we go. Done. So I need to cut down this bobstay fitting. We had it made, it had three holes. We got, uh, now I'm gonna cut it down so we only have two. Take it off right here and round off the end, just like this side. I got, I got the hole laid out for the one inch uh, knob that comes through the, the center of the bobstay fitting. So I fill a hole in the boat. There it is. So you can kind of see the gap and how much work needs to be done on the inside. to be a little bit of feather and fair in there. And grinding away as well. Yeah, I like it. It matches the rest of the bronze. All right, now I just gotta cover up the hole in the front of the boat. And then I'll fill these once this gels up and tacks, then I'll be able to load it up from the inside without gravity taking over and everything falling out. Yeah. I don't know how that's gonna work. Should have squirted it in. There's a few layers of glass wet it out. And I'll see. So this I'm gonna have to build up into a wedge similar to that block that was uh, holding the bobstay on originally, the old bobstay. But I need to do some bracing here just to get these holes filled in. And then I'll drill this half inch hole out again once I get this thing built up to about an inch and a half wide, filling in this, uh, this triangular wedge shaped gap. Biggest thing was sealing off the holes that are right at the waterline. Got a bunch of squares and discs and everything cut to fill in holes we've got in the boat. So one thing I've noticed about this medium hardener is that it gels really fast. So I got a couple of through holes I need to work on here. Let's see how well this brilliant idea works. Let me try this one first. 